Hello everyone, I'm Zach Peterson and I'd like to welcome you all to another Flux tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at the circuit simulator inside of the Flux platform. Now, if you're new to Flux and you start looking around, you might be surprised to find, uh, at least from the main menu, that there is no option to access a simulation engine or a simulation application. Now, there is a simulator built into Flux. It's not so obvious where it is sometimes, but it is there. I'm going to show you how to access it, how to work with it, and some of the capabilities that it has built into it. So make sure to hop on to Flux and follow along. So to get started, let's hop into a project in Flux so we can learn a little bit more about the simulator. So I'm inside of a project in Flux and of course just sitting here in this project uh, suppose I wanted to simulate the electrical behavior in this project well if I go up here to the top menu you will notice that there is no option here to bring up or run any kind of simulator that is because the simulation engine is actually running in the background and really it is always running as long as all of the components that are in this project have an electrical model attached to them. And you'll notice here on the right side of the screen that there is a simulation drop down right here in the right panel. When I click on this, um, you'll be able to access the simulation settings. And of course, you can see here in my project that indeed four of my parts do not have simulation models. Um, you can click the Learn More button. And when you click the Learn More button, you will be redirected to a reference that gives you an overview of how the simulator works. Now, of course, you could click on individual components as well. And as you click on individual components, you'll notice here in the right side that there is a simulation drop down as well. And if you click here, you'll also see that sometimes you do not have a simulation model defined for one of those components. In that case, you could, of course, click the debug button. It will open up that component. And then from here, if you're the owner of that component, then you would be able to attach a simulation model to this component. Now, this is a component that was created by somebody else. You can see uh, up here, uh, Adrian95. That is actually not my username. So um, of course, I did not create this component. Um, if I wanted to, I could certainly fork it. And then I could do the edits myself and attach the simulation model. Now, if there is a simulation model that is attached to one of these components, you will find all of that information up here in the code tab. Now, obviously, with this particular component not having any simulation model attached to it, um, we don't see anything here. However, just as an example, um, let's suppose I go over to my items uh, in the library, and you'll notice here that I have the items with simulation model uh, option selected here in the filter. If I add in this component, this being one of my components, I can open it and then we'll be able to see what a simulation model actually looks like. I can go over to the code tab and now you can see all of the data that is in, uh, used to build uh, this simulation model. So everything that you need to know to write a simulation model can be found in the references. We'll include a link to all of the reference information uh, that is needed to build these simulation models. So you'll be able to find a link to that in the description. Now let's take a look at some of the stuff that is contained in this particular uh, simulation model. So you'll notice here on the right side under properties, we have a few different entries here that are actually particular to the simulation as well as particular to the part itself. So when you create a new part, of course, you will attach things like a manufacturer part name, a manufacturer part number. It's always a good idea to have the datasheet URL and then the designator prefix. However, there's a few other entries here. You'll see we have R on, which is the on state resistance for this transistor. We have a leakage current and then we have a beta value. So all of those are things that would be used in a SPICE simulation for this particular transistor. Now, you'll notice here in this step that the simulation engine will actually call out the values listed in these boxes here in these three lines of code. 
So you can enter in values here. You can enter in custom values when you actually create this component and it will override these values here on the right end of this code. Um, that allows you to essentially take an existing model, customize it, and adapt it to do what you need it to do. All of the other information in this component is standard. So here we have our terminals, and then you can see here in the PCB tab, we have the uh, footprint for this component. And if you wanted to, you can then access the, three, uh, the 3D model and any of the other information for this component. So just like in other ECAD platforms, the simulation model is built into the component and you can go through and modify it, do whatever you want to do with it. Now, anytime I make a modification to this, it is actually going to get added into version control. So you'll notice here, I've been playing with this, and if I go into change history, you're gonna see here that the original uh, data is all linked back to the original component. So this particular component was actually forked from another user, and you can see right here, this is the fork. However, if I go through and say modify all of this, it will actually get saved into the version control system. So let's go ahead and do this real quick. Let's say we want to change uh, on resistance to, uh, let's just make a quick string change here. So we change it to on resistance to. And I go through and make the other changes in these three areas. Uh, here, you'll notice that it says saving. Eventually it will finish saving. And then I can go up to the change history. And then you'll see here, ZM Peterson updated simulation code. So you can see here it uh, tracks all of those changes. And of course you can revert to earlier changes as needed um, as long as they're available inside of this panel. So once I finish making whatever changes I want to make in this model, um, what I can do is go back to the main menu, publish changes. Um, of course you want to add a note here. We'll just call it simulation update. We can click publish and then you will see those changes get published successfully. Now if I go back here to my original project and I refresh this, what will happen is I will then have a chance to review those changes and accept them or dismiss them. So you'll see down here in the lower left corner, I have some updates available for my part and then you will see right here uh, this simulation update was uh, published to the library and it's now available to accept or dismiss uh, in this current project. So now that we've gotten an overview of how to implement uh, code into components and then how that is accessible through the Flux platform, let's do something a little bit more fun. And let's go over here and we can access a new project. So in this new project, what I'll do is I'll just briefly outline how to create a simulation and then how to uh, actually view the results in the schematic editor. So here, once I get into this new project, I'm gonna wanna start adding uh, some important components into this schematic so that we can create a simulation. Um, first thing that you want to do is, of course, make sure that you are only working with items that have simulation models attached. And um, I think what we'll do is we'll just create a simple uh, op amp circuit. So here, these generic resistors are really useful for creating simulations um, because, of course, they are generics. They don't have any info attached to them other than what they need for a simulation or uh, to be converted to a, uh, a standard component that you would actually purchase from a distributor. So here we also need a ground symbol and then the other thing that we're going to need is a source. So we're gonna use the waveform generator. So now I'm gonna wire all of this up and then we'll be able to see how we can use all of this with an op amp to create a more realistic simulation. So here, as I'm wiring all of this up, what will happen is once I get to this point, I can actually go down here to simulation and you'll see here that the time right here is running 
and you'll see here that you can adjust the step size if you want. You don't have to adjust this, but you can. Um, and then here you can, of course, speed this up if you want to. You can slow it down, do whatever you need to do. Um, but right now, a simulation is actually running. So it is actually calculating the uh, voltage and current distribution throughout this simple circuit, uh, just like you would do with a standard SPICE simulator. So here, if I just go over to this power source, you're going to notice here that we have a few different parameters. And these parameters are all queued up in the simulation model for this component. So I can go through and edit any of this that I want. And then here in the simulation tab, you can see here that it is actually showing you a measurement of peak to peak uh, voltage and the current output from this source over time. So it's, it, it's updating this live as the simulator runs in the background. And so if I wanted to, I could then just click the eyelet here and it's going to become visible same thing with any of these, okay? So that's how we access some of the measurements on specific components. I can do the same thing here with these resistors. So with resistor one and resistor two, if I just here click voltage drop, VP1, VP2, you can see here that what it's calculating is the voltage drop just across the component and then the voltage measurement at pin one or at pin two. So you'll notice here that you don't have to actually place probes in the same way you would if you were using another SPICE simulator or another ECAD program. All you have to do is just make these visible or invisible. Same thing here with R1, and uh, that's of course to be expected because R1 is essentially just the same component as R2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my op amp so I can just search for it in the public library and I can just drag it in like I would any other component. Now once I have it dragged in here, I can of course make all of the connections and wire it up. And you'll notice as I wire it up, um, it's actually uh, changing the simulation as it runs. So you can see um, some slight uh, bumps in this uh, peak to peak voltage waveform as I've wired this all up. And so the simulator really is updating live as you edit the design. Um, here I need to select those wires and just delete them because of course that makes a short circuit here. And now that I've done that, I can actually take a look at this output voltage and enable it. And you'll see here, I'm now measuring my output voltage. So we've basically just created a very simple uh, inverter. It's just taking this input waveform, multiplying it by negative one, and that's what we see on the output. So pretty simple. One thing that you would uh, typically expect by looking at this circuit is to see uh, some rail connections here. Now, don't be alarmed if you look at a component and you don't see certain connections because those could be defined in the simulation model. So to determine that, you could just select this and then scroll down, take a look at properties, and you'll see some things here that are actually defined as defaults in the simulation model. Now, of course, this particular circuit does not have a gain of 100K. That gain is actually being overridden by this setting for these two resistors. The gain is not 100K, it's actually a gain of negative one. So this might actually be the maximum gain. So of course, make sure that you review any of these models um, so that these values make sense uh, before you add them into a project because you don't want to get into a garbage in, garbage out kind of situation. Um, of course, the other thing you can do to ensure that this model is accurately capturing things like rail voltages or any other configuration that would be necessary on this type of component, you can then uh, right click, open this up, and of course, once you open it, you can go over to the code tab, and from the code tab, you can actually review what is uh, declared in that simulation model in code. You can also see the properties here in this model, and then you could edit them as needed. Thanks everyone for watching this simulation tutorial. Um, I hope that this shows you where you can access all of the important features to turn on and off the uh, simulation indicators, as well as where you can access simulation models. 
Make sure to check out the links in the description. Those will provide uh, some resources that you can use for building your own simulations in Flux. And last but not least, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can keep up to date with all of our tutorials as they come out. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you.